Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Clean Technica's news broadcast. Now, this week we again don't seem to be reaching the full 20 minute length video that we are aiming for, but that is for the exact same reason as why I can't get a haircut right now. The coronavirus lockdowns. There's just less news to go around. Having said that, we do have some pretty interesting stories this week, so uh, let's get to it. Renault. In today's news, Renault announced that it is no longer going to be selling internal combustion engine vehicles in China, which is one of the biggest automotive markets out there. Now, uh, this may or may not have had something to do with the fact that they only sold 18,607 vehicles this quarter, out of the nearly 100,000 uh, capacity of what they could have built. And this resulted in a $212 million loss even before the COVID-19 lockdowns. What's even more interesting is that Renault does plan to continue selling electric vehicles in China. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. Uh, just like all other outside companies, uh, in order to do anything in China, they need to uh, partner up with a Chinese-based company. And in this case, for most of its vehicles, uh, they partner with Dongfeng Motor Group. However, with its electric vehicles, they actually partner with a different company called Jiangling Motor Electric Vehicles. And so those will continue to be produced and sold there. Then if you think that that's all, well, you'd be mistaken, because it gets even more interesting after that. Uh, the chairman of Renault for China, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, I'm just going to put it up here. In any case, he said that this move, and I quote, would more efficiently leverage our relationship with Nissan. Now, you've got to understand, the uh, Renault-Nissan uh, Mitsubishi alliance is a pretty fragile one. And last year, there were quite a few rumors going around that there is a lot of tension between Renault and Nissan. And no one explained it better than Carl Zagon himself in his press conference in Lebanon after he uh, escaped from Japan, which was so dramatic that they're going to make a movie about it. However, having listened to the entire press conference as well as the Q&A, it basically became evident what was going on. So, basically, Nissan... They never wanted to go electric. I mean, at this point, they don't have much of a choice anymore. But it was uh, only back in 2012, it was Carlos Ghosn that actually pushed Nissan to make the leaf. And as you can see, ever since he's been gone, they haven't been making much progress with EVs until just recently, uh, near the end of 2019. And that's only because, you know, they're already backed into a corner. I wonder if the executives who orchestrated Carlos Ghosn's fall uh, all the way back in 2016... Uh, would have made a different decision today uh, had they known where the market would be at for them in 2020. And I'm talking about the stock market here because back in uh, compared to what they had in Q4 2018, Nissan currently only has a third of its valuation left and Renault only one fifth. Climate change. So the next story is going to be more pictures than words. Uh, the World Resources Institute uh, was interested in publishing a blog post on Clean Technica, as they've done many times before, uh, this time by Kelly Levin, uh, an expert in both climate as well as the environment. She recently took a trip to Antarctica, and she noted five visible changes to the area. I would highly recommend you read the actual article, and just to get you enticed, let's go through those five visible changes. Antarctica's air and oceans are heating up. Ice is retreating and melting rapidly. Some penguin populations that fail to adapt are shrinking. Something called watermelon snow, which is snow that turns red because of algae that can now thrive. Land that used to be covered in snow and ice is now suddenly becoming green. If there's one thing to take away from this story, and it's what the conclusion is about, it's what happens in Antarctica doesn't stay in Antarctica. It's a fascinating read, seriously. Take a look at it. Hyperloop. Progress has been made when it comes to creating a hyperloop that would connect several countries together. Hart Hyperloop is a Dutch-based company uh, founded by the winners of the 2017 Hyperloop competition that Elon Musk organized. Now, in 2018, uh, the company released a feasibility study of connecting Amsterdam to Frankfurt using a Hyperloop. But today, they are publishing a much more ambitious study that aims to connect France to Belgium to the Netherlands to Germany. Now, um, they proposed five routes and they had a map. It was a bit low res, so I made my own. These are the different uh, five routes that they are proposing. And if they do manage to do this, that would be so exciting. 
According to their roadmap, the company is first going to attempt to prove the viability of Hyperloop technology by reaching a speed of 700 kilometers per hour using their new testing facility that will be approximately three kilometers long. Uh, they're going to attempt to do this somewhere around 2022. Uh, then their next step is to create some operational short distance lines, either for cargo or for passengers. Now, uh, this will be something like 10 or 15 kilometers long, and they plan to get there by 2025. If they do manage to achieve the 700 km per hour speed, then they would be the first in the world to do so. Uh, the current world record is 467 km per hour and is held by War Hyperloop uh, of the Technical University of Munich. And this was achieved during the Hyperloop competition SpaceX organized in 2018. Tesla. So there is a bunch of Tesla news this week, so I'm just going to go from shortest story to longest. First off, Tesla is getting really, really close to launching in Israel. They already started hiring service technicians, so launch should be imminent. And I hope that this also means that you're going to start expanding again soon, because they still haven't launched in Eastern Europe, and they still have like half of Southern Europe left that they also have not launched yet. Those are potentially some pretty big markets, you know? And we have three more stories uh, to go, but all of them actually come from the same source, uh, the Third Row Podcast. They again had Elon on as well as Sandy Munro, and some news came from that. And the first and shortest part is has to do with the Model Y Octavalve. It's part of the heat pump, and basically we already knew that the heat pump makes the Model Y a lot more efficient, gives it more range, but we didn't know by how much. Well, according to Elon, it's a staggering 10%. That, that's a lot. Furthermore, in the podcast, Elon reiterated his plans to have the Model Y made out of a single piece cast. Now, uh, those of you who have been following uh, Sandy Munro's fascinating disassembly of the Model Y, we already know this, but the Model 3 is made out of a bunch of parts that have all been welded together, whereas the Model Y is made out of two parts, uh, and I'm just going to quote here, uh, they are uh, basically two big high-pressure die-cast aluminum castings that are joined. And later this year, that's going to be one part. And when Sandy Munro heard this, his only response was like, wow. Now, according to Elon, the body shop size for the Model Y is 30% smaller than the one for the Model 3. Now, I've been on tour at Fremont and I've seen the body shop for the Model 3. I mean, that line, it took a while to walk down. And so my first reaction was like, only 30% less? But then, you know, I came to think about it. <clears throat> the stamping uh, of simple components like the door, those machines were already huge. They were enormous. And that was just for a component. And in this case, they're doing it for half a car at a time. So basically, it makes sense that this machine would be a lot bigger than that even. It would be enormous. So if the Model Y comes from two parts, then let's say one part is 30% of the body shop, second half is also 30%, then another 10% to join it together. And that's how you get to 70%, which means you saved 30. Exactly what Elon said. So in the future, if Model Y is going to be just one big machine, they might save as much as 50%. Then the last thing that we learned from the podcast has to do with the Gigafactory Berlin. It turns out they're going to get a next generation paint layering technology that even the Shanghai Gigafactory doesn't have yet. And um, while these options will cost more, they're likely to be more durable and the color is going to look better than anything Tesla has offered before. According to Elon, this adds depth and something called flop. Now, if you don't know what that is or having a hard time imagining what that would look like, you're not alone. So let me try to explain it to you. Uh, basically, it has to do with the fact that in, with the bodywork around the curves, uh, the color is going to look a little bit different, either a bit lighter or a bit darker. And in some places, it, it might even look as if there is more than one color at the same time, which is actually true. A pretty good example of paint layers is if you've ever seen a white Model 3 next to a pearl white Model 3. Uh, all vehicles, they basically get this uh, undercoat layer, something's called a base coat. Then on top of that, for the white and black Model 3s, uh, you basically get that one color on top, and that's considered one layer. Now, for pearl white, uh, you get the same base coat. Then on top of that, you get white. Then on top of that, you get pearl. And then they uh, sometimes cover it with a sort of a transparent coating. And that would be then two or three layers. Now, according to Elon, the paint shop in Giga Berlin will be able to offer up to three more layers than before. So that would be a total of like five or six. Pretty crazy. And that was it for this week's broadcast. We hope you guys liked it. And if you did, please share it. Our uh, news broadcast is relatively new. And if you send it along to your friends, we would definitely really appreciate that. 
Also, giving this video a thumbs up would help us along. Now, everything that we cover in this video, we also try to write articles about. And the links to those, together with timestamps, can be found in the video description down below. Other than that, I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Till next time, see ya.